All right, guys, welcome back to the Tush Mahal. It's Tuesday, and we're back on the 1968 Triumph TR250 restoration project. A little colder in the garage today. It's a high of plus 2 degrees Celsius outside today, so it's about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. In the garage, it's about whew, 46 degrees Fahrenheit. That's probably about 7 degrees Celsius. So a little chilly around here, so we got the uh, this little space heater on. And we're going to have to switch, I think, to the full-size heater shortly and get that hooked up. Um, but we'll go as long as we can without having to do that. I also need to insulate the garage doors soon, I would say, probably within the next week or two. And that will be for the rest of the winter, so I'm not looking forward to having to do that, having to have the garage door shut 100% of the time. Anyway, today is carb day, so I've got the uh, triple Webers here, and uh, we'll bring them up onto the bench and have a little First bit of a discussion. First thing I'm going to do today is I've got the uh, two hard lines, uh, the entry and exit from the actual fuel pump. So this is for the entry, so a soft line uh, will attach to this. This goes to the entry of the fuel pump, and this is the exit from the fuel pump up to the soft line where it enters the Weber carbs. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and install those on the car just to get them out of the way. And then we'll have our chat about the Webers. And we'll break out the bag of bits. Uh, so this will show you the linkages and the mounts, etc. that we're going to have a little bit of a discussion Sometimes about. Sometimes you have to undo a few things that you've done in order to get things uh, installed properly. So I've had to remove the distributor and the coil again. And also needed to remove uh, one of the alternator brackets. And I'm going to be removing this bottom bolt from the uh, water pump housing as uh, it picks up a little bracket to hold the fuel line in place so we're going to go ahead and do that now just thought I'd uh, show you the routing of that uh, fuel line and uh, what we had to do to get it on there so it's a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle to get it in place but uh, once it's in there we should be good to go all right guys carb time so here are the carbs we're going to be running with their Weber DCOE 40s, or actually DCOE 2 40s. These are about 30 years old, so they're Italian, which is great. There's the uh, little made in Italy, Bologna. So uh, we're going to play around with these. They still need to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, I did clean them up significantly as opposed to what they look like when I took them off the car and maybe I'll link to a video up on the right hand corner of me uh, soda blasting these and doing a few other things and rebuilding them so they have all new internals they were also um, put it into an ultrasonic cleaner after they were soda blasted so internally they're very clean and uh, we've done a little few touch-ups and scrubbings here and there uh, cleaned up uh, most of the uh, brass that we could um, painted a few uh, things like the covers are painted the uh, inspection covers are just painted or sort of fake cadmium coated. So they look a lot better than what they did. Having said that, they do not look brand new. So they have a little bit of patina to them, which is not necessarily a bad thing. They're not going to have as much bling as the brand new stuff, but the brand new stuff is going to age as well. So I'm happy with the way that these look currently. All right, guys, remember I mentioned the whole homemade aspect to these uh, linkages? Uh, well, here they are on full display, so you can see pretty much that these look very homemade. Lots of brazing, lots of uh, weird twisting, so uh, yeah, they don't look the greatest. Now, whether I'm able to duplicate this with new parts or not, that's yet to be seen. I'm going to have to do some research, but I thought I would try to put this back together the way it came off the car initially anyway, just to see if I can get it set back up the way it came off. And that's going to be a bit of a puzzle all on its own. So let me go through a piece by piece. I'll put some stuff back on the car just roughly so you can see it back together. So as mentioned, most of the intakes that I have seen, if not all of the intakes I have seen, have been one piece. So there's actually three of the separate intakes, but joined by another piece of aluminum or cast or whatever. So if you take a look at Canon or Pierce manifolds, for example, they're all a one-piece design, not individuals like these are. So if I take a look at this first piece that the previous owner, I think, has made, so this uh, apparatus here would go on these back tubes 
on the intakes and that was to create a vacuum source for the brake booster I believe so that's how that would go so I don't have too many concerns about that so that looks like it's usable obviously with new hoses new clamps etc and we'll get that cleaned up and painted so I think that piece is usable so we'll just leave that All right, right the there. next piece of the puzzle is actually this linkage bar and uh, this again very custom made um, this would actually go if you see these little bushings so these little brass bushings they ride up in these two nuts that he's got welded on here so oh, I can't really see that so those go basically in here so let me see if I can install that and just let it hang down okay there's a shot of the carb linkage installed again it just this rod spins on these little brass bushings between these two points I actually need to remove one of the intakes to be able to install the rod um, and then it's just capped it with a couple of cotter pins on either end to keep it from moving within those uh, two fixed points so here are the linkages for the uh, individual carbs just sort of hanging down so yeah very homemade these are a little uh, bent and that's the way they came off the car I guess they needed to for clearance of the intake so instead of repositioning the actual bar they just bent it over anyway that's what that looks so like that leaves this piece here which I'm gonna be honest with you I have no idea I have no recollection of actually how this hooks up so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research back in my videos and my notes I believe this might actually attach to the pedal shaft or the throttle shaft and then this actuates the carb somehow I'll have to figure that out so anyway again pretty homemade looking lots of uh, brazing and welding on this piece as well so we'll figure that out well I've got you here <laughs> this was one of the uh, choke cable pulls just like a coat hanger pretty much with a nut and uh, yeah so that's uh, not looking so good then we get to uh, the piece de resistance the fuel rail which is uh, definitely homemade looks like plumbers fittings in here so that will definitely need a new fuel rail and uh, new fuel lines of course but um, that was I knew that was necessarily when I took that off the car but getting back to these linkages is another story I, I really needed to inspect these a lot closer and that's why I'm digging them out now to figure out my next course of action as far as uh, trying to utilize these individual intake manifolds anyway it's going to be some hard thinking so if you're curious on how this fuel rail would have worked he had it installed under the car so it would have worked something like this I don't know if you can see that or not something like that and it would have hooked up to this fuel line here so that's kind of like the fuel rail would have worked that's what he had planned anyway most of the fuel rails I see run along the tops of the carbs and that's probably what we're going to do when we reroute this uh, fuel line and get the proper parts in so I just wanted to show you how that was rooted before and it was actually underneath the carbs which I kind of like the idea of kind of hiding that the only problem is the fuel is a lot closer to the heat source from the header all right guys just a quick update for you I've been busy for the last hour or so just trying to figure out these uh, carbs we've got them bolted up uh, loosely we only got two bolts in each carb the previous owner couldn't have possibly bought any longer bolts <laughs> to do this so obviously we're going to swap those out probably for some nice cadmium colored bolts much shorter than that um, I did get the linkage hooked up and you know what oddly enough it's actually pretty compact compared to what uh, some of the other linkages I've seen on the markers which have huge crossbars and huge other pieces going across the top so it's actually fairly compact I did also figure out how the mechanism works I just got to figure out where it actually hooks up to this little bell crank here on the first carb but the linkage is actually working so there you go you can sort of see it moving together I haven't changed any of the uh, distances on these hookup pieces I kept them all the same so there is a little like a little bell crank down here which will actually activate on this pull here I just have to figure out which hole to hook it up to so I don't know if you can see that there but there's the crank there and that will come up and will pull here somewhere I'm not sure if it's on that hole or another hole 
but uh, and then that actually comes out to here and that will actually hook up to the throttle shaft as I suspected so anyway that's kind of ingenious and um, so yeah so I think that'll look okay actually once it's all cleaned up I may actually investigate like I'd mentioned in purchasing some new upgraded parts but we'll see I think we can work with what we have there um, it's a little bit different setup anyway it'll be a little bit different uh, than all the other guys running triple Webers, so it might be a little bit of a discussion piece for those guys that run triples and kind of know what they're all about. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do next. We'll probably do a little uh, research into how that bell crank hooks up and see if I can find some old video or old photos of what hole that actually gets hooked up to in this little position here to actually get that operating off the crank, and then I'll bring you back once I figure that out. All right, guys, that's it for now. Alright guys, back in the garage after a quick break for dinner and I did a little bit of research and a bit of uh, reviewing of videos and still photos of this linkage and I determined that this pole which is underneath here which again like I said will hook up to the throttle shaft so I've got that hooked up where it's supposed to be now so if I pull on that we've got a working linkage so that's good so uh, happy with that um, I think I can make this look half decent if I uh, sandblast this up and make it look uh, nice and clean. I could probably get this powder coated to look okay. So I think we're going to probably go with that direction. And uh, we'll probably, you know, redo uh, some of the hardware on here, some new nylock nuts, for example. And uh, as I'd already mentioned, we'll probably get some nicer cadmium plated bolts that are shorter for the carb connections. And we'll probably get some new soft mounts. So it's got soft mounts between the uh, intake and the carb. They're like a, an uh, O-ring type soft mount. So I'll probably get new ones of those. But other than that, I don't think we look too bad of shape. What do you guys think? All right, let's uh, clean this carb up a little bit. I'm gonna get this uh, remaining silicone off the front here. If you go back and look at my videos, you'll probably see that the previous owner actually siliconed in the chokes and venturis into the bodies of the carbs with these big o-rings which should have never been done so i'm not sure why i did that but there's a little bit of gasket material re remaining there and we'll remove that uh, and clean it up all right one more gratuitous look of the webers with the uh, air filters on i did want to mention actually that uh, the previous owner of this car ran these Webers without any air horns or trumpets on them whatsoever. He ran them straight flat to the bodies with these filters on. And that is not the best thing to do for uh, Weber carbs. So I am going to invest in some uh, short uh, trumpets or ram horns or velocity stacks, whatever you want to call them, that will fit within these filters. Um, so that's th some things I need to buy for this car. Um, I already mentioned that I'm going to have to buy the fuel fittings. Uh, I'm going to order the, uh, the air horns as well at the same time. We'll get something that can fit inside these filters. I do not have a lot of room. If you recall, I modified the inner fender of the TR250 uh, and the sheet metal in order to uh, give me a bit more clearance for this front carburetor. And that was just with this thin filter on there. So you have very little room in the TR250 to even get a filter on a Weber. So I think uh, we'll put those aside for now. We'll order some parts. And uh, I think the next thing we're gonna do is do a little bit of a garage cleanup and organize and put stuff away that we don't need anymore. For example, that rocker shaft over there can go away and a bunch of other uh, parts can go away. I need to go through the bins here and sort out what can go away permanently and what I'm still working on. And uh, I think the next thing after that is we'll pull out the exhaust system. It's under the body tub currently at the back here. So we'll pull that out and we'll figure out what we need to do as far as uh, the remainder of the exhaust on this car. All right, I think that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Uh, we'll get back out here tomorrow after work and continue on. Thanks for watching.